As an example, let's derive the electric field produced by a ring of charge. Consider this three-dimensional coordinate system, x, y, z, a ring of charge of radius r and total charge q is situated on the x, y plane and we want to measure the electric field on a point along the z axis. The distance of this point from the origin is obviously z. Let's consider an infinitesimal element dq from that ring of charge. So from geometry, recall that the arc length s is equal to the radius times the angle swept by the radius. Again, arc length s is equal to radius r times theta or the angle swept by the radius. Hence, the infinitesimal element of arc length which is ds is then equal to r d theta. Now again, dq here is equal to, from our previous discussion, dq is equal to linear charge density lambda times the length of this element which is ds. So I can plug this term here for ds which results to dq equals lambda times r d theta. The contribution of the infinitesimal element dq to point P is dE or infinitesimal component of electric field. Now the distance of point P to dq is r and we can break this DE here into components. One component is parallel to the z-axis, which we name as D E sub z. And the other one is a component perpendicular to the z-axis. Let's just name that component as D E sub y. Now, if the angle here is alpha, let's name this angle as alpha, then obviously this angle here is also alpha. Now based on the figure, the z component of d sub e or the electric field is equal to d sub e cosine alpha. While the component of the electric field perpendicular to the z axis is equal to d sub e times sine alpha. But we could actually calculate cosine alpha and sine alpha based on the given lengths r and z. Just by looking at the figure, cosine alpha is equal to z over r. Sine alpha is equal to the radius of the ring of charge divided by the hypotenuse, which is r. And this r here is equal to, using Pythagorean theorem, square root of the radius r squared and the other length of the triangle which is the z or z squared. But here's the thing, if we look at another dq here on the opposite side of the ring of charge, it produces another electric field d sub e and this d sub e has components of d e sub z that is parallel to the z-axis and another component that is perpendicular to the z-axis, d e sub y. Notice that these two d sub e's cancel out because the other one is pointing to the right and the other one is pointing to the left. So they actually cancel out and they are equal in magnitude because of symmetry. In other words, we only need to calculate the summation of the z component of the electric field from all infinitesimal element of charges to represent the electric field at point P. Other components of electric field cancels out because of symmetry. Recall that from previous discussion, the magnitude of E is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught integral of dq over r squared. And from the above equation, this one, The z component of E is therefore equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught integral of dq over r squared. This time, we multiply it with cosine alpha. Now, going back to the figure, let's assume that the ring has a uniform linear charge density lambda. And because of this, if its total charge is q, 
then we just divide it with the length of the ring of charge which is equal to 2 pi r. So this is lambda. Returning to our equation, now cosine alpha based on the previous equation is equal to z over r. So let's just replace cosine alpha with z over r. And let me plug dq here with the expression for our dq. So if I plug it here, e equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught integral of z times lambda r d theta divided by r cubed. And we already derived the expression for lambda. Lambda is Lambda is equal to total charge Q divided by 2 pi r times r d theta over r cubed. Notice that r here cancels out. And I can transfer the total charge Q and z outside the integral sign because they are constant. So E equals capital Q. Also, I can transfer 2 pi outside the integral sign because it's also constant. Notice that we already derived the value for r. This one, so we could just plug it here. Notice that the value of z and r capital R from the figure is always fixed. The radius is always fixed and the distance of point P to the origin which is Z is also fixed or constant. So similarly, we can take this denominator out of the integral sign as well. And we end up with d theta. This d theta is integrated from 0 to 2 pi in order for us to get the total contribution of all the infinitesimal elements of the ring of charge. So we integrate this from 2 pi to 0. And we all know that the integral of d theta is theta. And we plug in 2 pi from that theta. So we will end up with... The direction of the electric field is obviously along the z-axis or the positive z-axis because all the remaining component of the electric field that do not vanish because of symmetry is E sub z component. So since the ring of charge has a positive charge, the vector sum of the electric field on point P is along positive z hat. So this is actually z hat. Therefore. The 2 pi here will cancel out the 2 pi here. So we end up with q over 4 pi epsilon naught times z divided by z squared plus r squared raised to 3 hat, z hat. So this is our expression for the electric field at point P. But what if we measure the electric field from a point that is very far away from the ring of charge? Let's return to our expression. This means that we would like to calculate the electric field with the value of z that is way, way larger than the radius of the ring of charge. So let's first rearrange this equation by multiplying it with 1. So let's multiply it with 1, 1 over z, 1 over z. 
So again, this factor here is equal to 1. And we end up with 1 over 25 epsilon cubed over z squared divided by z raised to 2 third plus r squared divided by z raised to 2 third. So I'll end up with If we have the condition that the point P is along the z-axis that is very very far away from the ring of charge, then this factor here is almost approximately equal to zero because z has a very large value in comparison to the radius r. So let me rewrite this equation here. If we have this condition that z is far greater than the radius r, then the electric field at that point is approximately equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q divided by z squared z hat. Now, this expression is actually similar to the expression for the electric field of a point charge. This is consistent with the fact that the ring of charge looks like a point charge when it is viewed from a very far position. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and hit the notification bell button for awesome updates. Thank you for watching!